What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Crypto Shop with me, T. Hobbs. And of course, my man, Jay Silly. Yeah, what's up, everybody? How's everybody doing on this fine Thursday? What is it? Thirsty Thursday? You got your you got your drink? Nah, I you know. got oatmeal cream pies, you dummy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went and got some oatmeal cream pies. I ran and got some oatmeal cream pies right before the show started. I was like, oh, I got to go get some oatmeal cream pies. You know they take in, for all of you guys that don't know, Little Debbie's are being discontinued. So if you like oatmeal cream pies from Little Debbie as much as I do, you better go get you some because me and my wife about to go stock up for the future. Are uh, they really? Yeah. That's like that's the only snack that can, um, you know, you know the uh, the Twinkies, that's like the only snack that can survive the uh, the apocalypse. The apocalypse, yeah, I don't know. Dang, they're getting rid of, see, see, the apocalypse is coming, guys. They don't want to survive off Twinkies for the rest Bro. of our lives, so that's what when it I is. Was, when I was deployed on the ship, we couldn't get Twinkies. I had my brother ship a whole box. It was like a box of 40 Twinkies, like, each box had like 20 or 30 Twinkies in it. I had like 40 boxes. I was selling Twinkies the whole deployment. They were hey, doing like that's, hotcakes. That, that's 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 smart. I didn't spend no money. I was selling Twinkies. Anyway, sorry guys, I got a little sidetrack. But thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Please don't forget to tip the mother and barbers, aka hit the like and subscribe button. Turn your notification bells on so you get notified every time we go live and or put out a video. Today on the show, we're gonna be discussing the market. It ain't gonna take long because the market <laughs> didn't do absolutely anything. We gotta talk about a nice little AMC pump we had today and how I got, well, technically I'm not wrecked yet, right? But I definitely got into this play hoping that it was gonna squeeze today and it didn't. Instead, I just watched my money go. <laughs> But I'll put in money that I was that I was willing to lose just to see if it could potentially squeeze tomorrow or into next month. So we'll see what happens. Uh, that being said, um, as you can see, if we're looking at the heat map today, not much of anything was happening. But this is normal behavior, right? We had an astronomical day yesterday after the Fed spoke. He basically let us know that he could be easing up on um, interest rate hikes as early as December. Well, after he spoke, stocks ran up, crypto ran up, things ran up at a pretty high rate. It's fairly normal after a run up like that to almost 410 for us to kind of cool off. So this morning, if we go and take a look at the SPY, this morning we did just that, right? We had all of this movement from yesterday. This is the hour chart. Let me go to 15 minutes. <clears throat> so yesterday we had all of this crazy movement toward the end of the day after Jerome Powell spoke this morning. Instantly, we ran to this 410 level, which has been a very interesting level of resistance for us. Um, I'll show you here in a second on the futures exactly what I mean. But this level 410 right here is basically the top of a, a major trend line. Matter of fact, I think I have ES open over here. Here, let me show you guys something real quick. From a technical analysis standpoint, right? If we pull all the way back to the day chart, right? And we draw a trend line from the top of this trend right to the bottom down here just running through the tops right you can see that every time the spy dipped we ran back up and touched this trend line we had a nice big dip came up a little bit came down ran back up and the run was over when we touched the top of this trend line we dipped all the way back down further and look where this was at right so if we come right here this line right here, this 4109 on futures, lines directly up with this line right here on SPY. So the 410 level was very, very important, but it was expected for us to hit it and then kind of retrace. Now, whether or not we break through it, it will be interesting to see if we break through it because every single time we've run up, we've never broken through it before. Now, what does this line mean? Well, if we can break through this line, it basically signifies that we've gotten out of this particular downtrend, right? Once we break this trend, we could potentially go higher and higher. Will it happen? I don't know. Nobody's a, you know, nobody's a fortune teller, but you use those lines to, to kind of signify places where the spy can retrace to. That being said, after we had this miniature pullback, right? From 410 all the way down to 405, 
the SPY decided to come back to the pre-market low of the day, hang around this area and literally never let it go. It touched 408 a little bit, came right back down to this line. So it flirted around with the pre-market low pretty much all day. Well, Ethereum and Bitcoin, we talk about cryptocurrency, literally the same story. We got as high as 1311, came back down, dumped a little bit this morning to 1266, came back and touched 1277, only to finish around 1268 at the end of the trading day. Same thing with Bitcoin, touching 17252, dropping all the way as far as, uh, dropping to about 16.9, retracing back up and then consolidating and then dropping below the 200 EMA on the 15 minute and holding strong at 1687. All in all, this is pretty normal behavior after a bullish day like we had before. I mean, like we had yesterday, and I'm not really worried about it too much. I'm more worried to see, not worried, I'm more interested to see how the spy reacts reacts post this meeting leading up to the two or three weeks we have prior to cpi data and fomc coming out i believe on the december 13th in my opinion i think we pull back probably sell off maybe back to like 393 somewhere around there 390 only to pump some more so we we have enough room to pump for cpi and fomc not to break that trend line just my personal opinion. We'll see what happens though. So those are my thoughts on the market. Before we get into chat, Justin, your thoughts on the market, yes, sir. Well, you know, you know what's funny today is that I didn't really pay too close to SPY or QQQ um, because I mean, we didn't really do anything. We've just been chilling at the highs, which which is good. You want to see that. And the same thing with Ethereum and, and Bitcoin. I pretty much chilled, chilled out today, except for AMC, which I also took a couple calls stupidly and uh, you know, Calls went from like 40 cents to like 10. So eh, yeah, it's what it is. Uh, who knows? We might gap up and run tomorrow. Who knows? Optimistic thinking. Um, but what I didn't tell you, Hobbs, is I actually didn't pay attention to the market at the beginning because I had physical therapy and I found out I am broke as all hell, bro. Like, yes, uh, the the uh, the physical therapist said, how do you walk? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look, I don't know. So my day was pretty interesting from that from that standpoint but i mean yeah i mean right now the market is just i, I feel like the market is still drunk from yesterday mm -hmm. and uh we needed a day of cool off before we make a decision whether we're gonna go up or down so we'll see what happens tomorrow i think tomorrow uh tomorrow we'll either get more of the same or it'll be a directional day so it just depends but the longer we consolidate the bigger the move will be to the upside or downside the next time we get a move so you know if you're trading just try try to identify the days where we're going to be you know in a range and something tight like today what is it like a four dollar range today yeah. so try to identify those days so where you don't get chopped out like you probably would have um and, and anything else so yeah yeah no doubt no doubt no doubt and then as far as crypto goes um crypto pretty much like i said the overall crypto market down 1.11 percent so i mean things that pretty much stuck out today obviously bitcoin solana still getting drugged through the mud ethereum is down um let's see how maddox doing actually the maddox is just holding strong yeah. maddox is just holding so strong through all of this volatility I haven't seen them come back. I think I might've seen them drop to like 79 cents when FTX came. But other than that, Matic has been holding really strong through all this. And obviously Dogecoin and XRP are pretty much the winners for me. Like they, they just been holding, oh, and Chief. Chief's definitely holding strong through all of this. So shout out to anybody who hold, who's holds any of those. Like those, to me, those have been the winners through all of this, man. Like the ones that, that can hold strong, you know that they have a good holder base and you know that people actually believe in them when they can hold through this stuff. So, um, and then I wanted to discuss a uh, bull run, man. Like I said, this is one that I've been keeping my eye on. I'm not sponsored by the bull run team, just to make it clear. As an influencer, you don't have to be sponsored just to talk about a token. I'm an investor in the project and I wanna share it with you guys because I made some decent money on this thing, right? So I got in probably about at the 60 cent level, you know what I mean? Like me and Justin talked about this thing and um, it ran all the way up to almost $4.70 yesterday before finally, I mean, finally, after being up 800% in 10 days, it had a cool off session. 
plenty of sales came in, dropped the price down to about a dollar eighty, so a nice strong pullback. But in my opinion, in regards to a pullback, it's up two hundred and two percent in seven days. That's unheard of, right? Any project would be happy to be up two hundred percent over one week, right? But this community over there, right? I wasn't in there last night. My daughter's birthday was yesterday, and probably won't be in there uh, tonight. I'm gonna try. Actually, I will be in there tonight. I think we're doing like some buying, having some buying fun after I make a couple videos. But the thing about this community that I love is it's a mixture of the BTFA swing Dow community, newer people, right, new holders, as well as Modi Kine and Jay Foster. Now, these two people are whales that I met when I was over in BTFA. And one thing I like about them is they are very, very genuine people, right? They, they always keep it a buck. The other thing about it, I like about them is they motivate motivators to motivate the motivated. That's the shit we used to say when I was with the Marine Corps. And one thing I like about the community is if even if it's not a huge buy, whether it's a thousand or five thousand dollar buy, they don't mind buying a dollar, two dollars, three dollars just to keep that green wall moving. And this is things that people want to see from a project to take it to the next level. Right. Whales want to see activity. They want to see community and the bull run token with the bulldozer and everything that it stands for, all the utility that they have, I really think is fairly unique. And it's one of the ones that I would personally do a lot more research on and just see exactly what it's about. Right. I'm not telling you to buy it. I'm not telling you to sell it. I'm telling you that I really like what it has going on over there. And I think that this thing is not done running. Right. I think that they had some people that made a lot of money. I mean, one of these buys, one of these sales we saw yesterday, one of these dudes, somebody got in it and like they put 0.4 ETH in mm -hmm. whatever level they got in. And I think they sold for like eight ETH. I mean, at that point, like 0.4 to eight ETH, that's a win, right? Like I maybe would have taken my profits a little slower and not sold at once, but my opinion doesn't matter when you're talking about your wallet. Like it just doesn't matter. So got in, made a lot of people some money, but I don't think this project is done by far. I think the bull run is just now beginning. And, you know, I definitely wanted to cover it and talk about it on the show. So that being said, let's get into some of these comments real quick. Wait, before we before we get oh, into the ahead. comments, yeah, just a just a just a quick thought about taking profits and taking profits like smartly. When you think about it, like I guess there's like two two schools of thought potentially. Mm -hmm. You could have you could take profits the way that this happened, right? Have a whole bunch of money and then buy back in at the bottom, which is a gamble, right? Or you could just take profits slowly and then your bag continues to grow as the coin continues to push up, so you're not stopping the momentum of the token, which makes you that much more money. So I like I feel like there's two schools of thought. I mean, you never know what's gonna happen. I'm not ragging on the person who took profits because you should take profits. But in my opinion, it's it's smarter to not kill the momentum and to slowly take your profits out mm -hmm. as, as the token continues to go up. That way you're continuing to grow your bag even though you're selling a little bit. So I don't know, just, just food for thought, but. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that selling, like you said, I mean, selling is selling, but in my opinion, as a trader, there's a way that you can sell to give a, a decent entry, so to speak, right? For other people and not cause, cause right, okay, I'll give, you an, I'll give you an example. This causes FOMO to the upside. This causes FOMO the opposite direction, right? Yep. When people see you sell 10, 20, 30 ETH at a time, you know, this causes FOMO to the downside. And when you're dealing with something that's a small cap, like, Again, take your profits, do whatever you got to do. I'm just trying to educate on ways, other ways to potentially take profits, especially with something that has such a dope ass chart like this that, you know, I'm sure it's not done. I'm, 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 I'm almost positive it's not done. So we'll see. We shall see. That being said, let's get jump into these comments real quick. So Dar228 says, tip the barbers, AKA hit the like button. Appreciate you stopping by Dar. Eddie T in the building says, what up? What's going on, Eddie T? Tip the barbers and sub. Good day, shop. Justin, did you finally buy your bag for BRL? <laughs> no, I did not. He did. He did. 
<laughs> I did Crypto not. instigated. What's up, everyone? What's going on, Crypto instigated? What's up, fam? What's going on, Dylan today? True Duku says, peace, everybody. What's happening? Hakeem Isaac says, hello. What's going on, Hakeem? Timsky says, Twinkies are dry and gross. Hater. Yeah, 100% hater. 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 Twinkies are amazing. You should you should go sit in the corner for that comment. True Duku says, oh, snap. I'm just noticing that we're over 3K subs. I love it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we stopped. I hadn't made a lot of videos um, in my transition with the move. At some point, I'm going to get back to making videos. My focus has just been doing the live streams and focusing really back on my family. Like, for most of you that don't know, like, I spent a lot of time working with BTFA and Swing Down to the point where it was getting it was getting pretty bad in regards to the amount of time I was spending away from my family. And I didn't like that. So I, I felt like I owed it to them, you know, to, to try to find an even work family balance, work-life balance. And I'm trying to get there, but again, I'm in no rush because the shop's not going anywhere. And I like live streaming more than I like doing anything anyway. Videos is a It's way easier. It's way it's, easier. It's right? way easier. It's, it's, it's way easier. So, uh, but yeah, eventually I'm going to get back to making videos and stuff like that. And hopefully we can grow those subs. You know, my goal as a content creator, as an educator, my goal is really to talk to you guys on the live stream. Like, I don't really do this for the money. Like, I don't know how many times I got to say that. The YouTube money is not that good. Like, it's, especially when you only got 3,000 subs and you haven't really put out a lot of videos. Like, it's not that good. It's just not, right? Like, I do it to educate people on the news, to educate people on trading, and to potentially get more people into the discourse so we can educate them even further, right? I don't do this for the money, guys. I do it for the love. And if the money comes, by all means, I'm all for it too, right? So just, just to, you know, Quick tip. Mile high crypto in the building. What's going on, bro? Timsey says, Do you guys have Joe Lewis? They are the best of the best for stat cakes. Foxy knows. No, I've never heard of Joe Lewis. Must never be a Canadian of. thing. Uh True Duca says Jay walks with a pimp limp. <laughs> I sure do. Yeah, we both got bad feet. My my foot therapist told, told me my arch is non-existent. <laughs> oh, I got arches. Yeah, I would have no arches. There's like no. Please tell me you got all that stuff documented before you got out, Justin. Well, oh. the good thing, Crypto Instigator, yeah, I'm, I'm still in. in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's all getting it's all getting written down. I got a month of physical therapy, and then uh, I got a re-examination, and they're probably going to get a second opinion because your boy's legs are all types of jacked up. Yeah, trust me, I've schooled Justin on the art of documentation in the uh, Navy. Uh, Samuel Inu says, so the QQQ stock is a good option for any good news on the market. Any stock is a good option for I was about any to good say, news yeah, on the market. If the market gets good news, ETFs run, but so do the individual stocks because the individual stocks, stocks make up the ETFs. So yep. QQQ is one of the ETFs that we follow. I don't, I, I mean, I probably should start trading more on the QQQ because it's way more volatile. It, it, yeah, it's much more volatile. So uh, at some point, I'll probably start trading on the Qs a lot I'll, more as well. I'll but, tell you this, uh, Sam. Um, like, you got to, you got to, if, if you're just trying to buy stock, then QQQ and SPY are like your safest option, right? Because like year over year, they normally outperform the rest of the market. They're slow, they're steady, and they're uh, they're the safest. They're more safe than the individual stocks. So if you're not doing options or futures and you're just looking to like compound a position in a stock, not financial advice, but I guess kind of, but still not financial <laughs> advice. QQQ and SPY are two of the best stocks for low risk asset management, which, yeah. yeah. And, and any financial advisor, like real financial advisor will agree with that, I promise you. Yeah, no, I mean, any, I think anytime you like, like my daughter has like a settlement that she can't touch for some years and I'm gonna have to be really nice to her because it's a really nice settlement. But the majority of the, the settlement, they put basically into ETF funds. Like they won't let us touch it, but they'll they'll invest it into ETFs like the QQQ and the SPY. My, my wife gets the, she gets the uh, the documentation like monthly. Yeah, the same Yeah, and she's like, the, the, they already lost like 10, $20,000. I'm like, babe chill i was like you got to understand if they're investing it correctly in 10 years that money will be worth 10 times what it's worth today trust yeah. me when i tell you that. i said when, when Nevada, my daughter's 10 now 
I don't think she can touch her money for till she's like 21. Is that in 11 years, the spy at $400 is would be a joke. It will, it will be a joke. So she was like, oh, I was like, yeah. So don't worry, it's, it, it's down now because the market is down, right? Um, what's going on, Design DNA? Uh, Crypto Industry says, don't, Hobbs, don't be scaring me about little Debbie man. Dude, my wife told me, I almost freaked out. Like I literally almost fell out. I was like, and I hadn't had oatmeal cream pies for months and she just came home with a box of oatmeal cream pies and she told me that they didn't discontinue it. I was like, ah! it's like, I don't even eat a lot of sweets. So like, that's like my only go-to for real, for real. What's up people, what's going on for? Uh, I paper traded options today and made stupid money. Wish it was real money, LOL, but we will see. Let's go for it, let's go, man. I hope I hope it works out for you, man. I hope it works out for you. Sammy, I think that little Debbie thing was fake. I think she's just trying to, to, to mess with you. Can't find it? No, my wife is a trickster, so she might as well. I, you know, just, just I think me. she was trying to mess with you. Hold on a second. That that'd be a that'd be kind of a big thing. I think Little Debbie's a pretty big company, so let's see. Little, they're definitely not going out of business. Little Debbie net worth. Let's, let's see what they're worth. Oh well, the rapper Little Debbie, which I didn't know there was a rapper, is worth two million dollars. <laughs> well, let's go snacks oh it's a 1.4 billion dollar company ain't no way it's going out of business ain't no way yeah you got got there i don't know if you're still here my computer's slow no he left dang well just so y'all know he got got pretty bad oh for real crypto is again they can discontinue selling them at the commissaries seriously i haven't been inside a commissary in a while though I don't, I don't know, man. I just can't believe that a $1.4 billion company would stop selling one of their snacks. That probably, I mean, I, I like the oatmeal cream pies too, so it's kind of weird. Anyway, oh, he's back. Man, she already left to take the kids to school, so man, I took that opportunity right. to give me some water and give me another. Crypto instigator said they, they discontinued selling them at the commissaries. Oh, that's where she went. Oh, so maybe maybe that maybe that's what it was. Maybe they're just that's, not. That's where she went to get him. Thank you so much, Crypto Instigator, for doing that research on me. Well, yeah. now you just got to go to the regular store, like all the rest of us humans. Well, I, I mean, I guess like I don't go to the commissary because it's more expensive than going to the regular store out here. Oh no, the tax, the no tax out here helps out a lot. I mean, but I mean, I don't mind going. Plus, the commissary only has the smaller ones. I like the big little. I, th I like the big old milk cream pies. That's what she said. <laughs> anyway, RHRT yeah. Network says, here it was good. Market is looking like uh, the heart transplant took. <laughs> yeah, the market, yeah. Oh, well, we're gonna get into a little bit of what happened this morning with the crypto market too, by the way, which was interesting to say the least. Uh, crypto says, what's popping shop? What's popping cryptos? Scott says, what's up shop? It's buy time. Yeah, it's uh, it's always a good time to DCA in. Larry Appleton says, tip the barber slash hit the like button. Appreciate it, Larry. What's up, Larry? Uh, read that one. Dillinger Dave said, those new Hostess bouncers are dope. I have not heard of Hostess bouncers. I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm, gonna I'm not a fat boy though, I swear. Uh, True Ducal says, he went, to <laughs> he went to yell at her. Yeah, he did. I did. I was looking for ass. <laughs> Uh, I was trying to hawk her ass down before she went to go get the kid. Oh, they discontinued them in Canada too. She sucks to be a Canadian, huh, Timsky? Yeah. They discontinued Twinkies like four times in my forty-two years. They'll be back. <laughs> 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 I love it. They don't. Luke they Denson. don't want to rebrand them, so they just discontinued them. And they're like, we'll just bring them back in a couple months. Luke Denson said, "What y'all think about Elon Musk making the chip to put in your brain, Neuralink? Yeah, I heard he's supposed to be coming out with them in like about six months." Um, my my thoughts on it is I heard it was for paraplegics only and it was to try to like rewire the brains so they have feeling or they can they can move again. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people, they like their conspiracy theory brain goes crazy when they start hearing stuff about, you know, putting stuff into your brain and, you know, control. But, you know, you never know. You put that into your brain and then lo and behold, now Elon Musk has you like a robot controlling you. And then he really does turn out to be the supreme leader of the United States of America. You really Bro. don't. So me personally, I don't think I would. But at the same time, like, 
I wonder if you put the chip in your brain and they can repurpose it for you to become like a supercomputer. Like that'd be pretty dope. Bro, can hold on. My thing came out. Look, there is a movie that uh what's the name just put out? No. Oh, what's the name oh. just put out in the trick cocaine period? <laughs> Megan. Megan is the name of the movie. Uh that's coming out. It's got like a little Android. So as soon as I heard that and I watched that thriller, I was like, no neural link for me. Now the, the movie is about an Android, but I feel like I feel like a neural link is just too in it's it's giving people too much control. Right? Like I don't know what it does. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it's just it's I've been a religious I just it's, don't it's, like it's, it, it's it's for it's for people who've lost uh who who've lost like mobility and it's supposed to rewire their brain so that they can they can like feel and move again. That's that that's my understanding of what it's supposed to be. Oh, Are you nah. looking it up? No. Cool and Chris told me to text to let him to let him know every time yeah. we go live. So I'm I'm posted on Twitter, dear Cool and Chris, we are live. When when uh <laughs> when RA said you're I thought about Cool and Chris because he normally come in here like that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like the Neuralink is it's just too I don't know, it feels too against the Bible, right? Like and I don't when I say against the Bible, I'm not like a super religious person, but I do remember growing up as a seven day Adventist and they believe in this thing called like yeah. the mark of the beast. You grew, you is, grew up super, super religious though. Super religious, right? So like this, the, the mark of the beast is like this, you know, ultimately they plan on putting a chip or marking the chip with the number 666. And I just feel like the neural link is just, I don't even want to know what the, the small inner chip probably has the number 666 somewhere in it. And I'm, I'm just not fucking with it. No, no, thank you. Like, just let yeah. me be a paraplegic. See, well, that's called as fear mongering, and and also, you know, fear mongering. I'm telling that, you the reason why called, I don't like it. Yeah, I know. I, well, what I'm saying is that the church was fear mongering, and 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 yes. So so you know you know the RFID chips that people some not a lot of people have them, but some people have the RFID chips yeah. that they put like in their hand and stuff, and then they can like you know access places and stuff without having yeah. like a key. People said that was the mark of the beast, and that if you got one of the neuro, if you got one of the RFID chips, the government was going to implant them so that they could track you. Like, I mean, could it be real? Sure. Is it fun to think about? Like, sure. But like, is it really oh, actually about- happening? Yeah. No. Like, I, well, no. What I'm saying is like, it, it's like, it's like a joke that everybody likes to say. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 fun to be like, oh yeah, I believe in this crazy conspiracy theory, and it could potentially be real, but it's probably Listen. not. My opinion is that ultimately it will not be going in my head. And I would strongly advise my young, soon to be adult children that they don't put it in their head. Well, here, here, here's, here's what I will say. I will say that. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'll, I, I will say this. I would not be interested just because of the fact that if something goes wrong and you're having brain surgery, you're brain dead, right? So I feel like the risks of the surgery don't really outweigh the reward of the Neuralink. So for me, it's a no-go off off rip from that, not from any crazy conspiracy yeah. perspective. It's just from a health perspective, I just don't trust it. Yeah. What do y'all think but, about Elon? Oh, okay, sorry. You, you were still yeah. reading? Go for it. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going, Mr. Yeah, uh, man, it's your, it's your, it's, <laughs> I already <laughs> ate it. <Logan. laughs> oh, I'm sure you got like ten more back there. Larry Appleton is uh, I a damn near grab a box. <laughs> I know you probably did. <laughs> Crypto instigator said, uh, "You mean the double decker ones?" Still never heard of them. Eddie T says, "Tipping, uh, tip the barber and sub." Appreciate it. Uh, Larry Appleton says, "Hey, can you check the Alcazar or yeah, Alcazar chart? Alcazar chart is looking bullish. Yeah, pull it up. Let's see what it looked like." Uh, crypto instigator says controlling you like Megan. LOL. I, I need to watch that because clearly you need to watch the freaking preview. It's, it's clearly really good. It, it looks crazy. Uh, so Alcazar on the it day dipped. it did actually. What but, does I seven mean, day look like? Well, this is a pretty significant dip. It dipped down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not just gonna brush over this dip right here. I mean, the chart dipped. It had a. Uh, what we like to consider somewhat of a double bottom here, right? And then it, it bounced back up. So it recovered really nicely. Uh, as far as 
does the chart look bullish? Let's take a look. Oh, uh, it does. It does for the seven days, except seven, for you know it's seven, consolidating. Seven day looks pretty good. Yeah, the month looked pretty good too. Yeah, no, it's it looks pretty good. I don't know what it does, but yeah, I could definitely pull up the charts, man. Look, I'm pulling the restrictions off the shop, man. Like y'all want me to look at a freaking chart? Throw it out there. The shop got y'all, man. Let's do it. Oh damn. Okay. Uh, four <sighs> says. That's for version one of it. Yes, so I'm, I'm right about the uh, helping paraplegic people out. Uh, Neuralink is what outed Batman and Batman and Robin. Don't trust Riddler or Jim Carrey. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. That's Tin good. foil hat. <laughs> uh, v says, could you please go over Lily Finance and Terrarium? Thanks. Uh, uh, what do you want to know about Lily Finance? Yeah, do you want to know about, about the fact that they aren't listed on Coinbase yet? Or, listen. and what do you want to know about Terrarium? The fact that they haven't come out with their exchange yet? What do you, what do you want to know? All right, what, what are we talking about? <laughs> listen, you know what? Y'all know I ain't no hater, but I'm going to tell it like it is, right? I'm not a hater. That's, that's not what I do. <laughs> I say the real TV. I'm so dumb with Bob. You, you can ask me to pull up almost any chart, but if you ask me to pull up anything that starts with a Seda or a Saitama, I might get your ass to boot pop. I'm just kidding. Well, but, we uh, can't look at Saitama B2? No. Listen, I mean, we'll probably pull it up if, if it's going crazy one day. Oh, no, sorry. It's V3. I'm sorry. It's V3, not V2. Uh, oh, no. No, 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 no. Listen, okay, so first we'll start with Lily Finance, right? Here's the thing about Lily, right? I don't know much about what they do whatsoever, right? I know that <laughs> they're, they're trying to do some type of medical blockchain and they're doing surgeries with kids and somehow tying that all into crypto. I don't know the ins and outs because I'm not on the team. Ryan Patrick would be a great source of information. Now, now that I got the sources of information out of the way, now I can give you my opinion. Here's my opinion. I think that it was a flaw. At very best, I can say that it was a flawed decision to announce the exchange listing before Coinbase did it. Period, point blank. It was. A, I think that was a poor decision. Now, whether or not it's a true, it's truth. My opinion is, I don't think so. Better yet, my opinion is hell no. I can say that for a many of reasons. The one that I will say is that Lily hasn't been listed on any other exchanges. And prior to this particular exchange announcement, they had little to no value. Exchanges make money because they get money off your value. If you can't produce value, then they're usually not interested. Now, a caveat to that is, however, Coinbase could be interested in whatever it is Lily is working on, but I don't know what Lily is working on, so I can't really tell you. Thirdly, if Coinbase is going to list them, the bottom line is we'll know in eight days. So that's all you gotta know when it comes to Lily. Flip the page, Terraria. Terraria, they did the exact same thing with Binance. Same Regardless thing. of the reason, we don't know why they did it, right? I can't really say, cause I, I'm not that close to the team. I can tell you that from a personal standpoint, I don't really like the way Milton talks condescendingly to the people that are potential. God damn, bully. Bull run? What the fuck? <laughs> I looked away for a second. All I can do is tell you that the way that Milton condescendingly talks to the people that are potential investors, I don't like that. However, that does not restrict me from purchasing his particular token. Why? I bought a bag of both of these tokens. I have a bag of Lily, and I also have a bag of Terrarium. But I didn't buy the bag of Lily when they made the Coinbase listing. I bought it a long time ago, and I just held on to it. Terrarium, I just recently bought a bag, um, a little over a trillion tokens, right? Or under a trillion, like 800 billion, something like that. Why? Because I'm willing to bet a small amount on the potential of them coming out with the actual centralized exchange. Because if they execute this, they've had a year and some change executed. This is the second time that they have, second chance that they have to execute on this promise, right? or the second chance that they have to execute on a promise. The first promise was Binance. The second promise is now the exchange. I've always said in the shop, and I'm never gonna change my tune, 
I don't give a shit what anybody else thinks because I have my own opinion. If Terrarium, as much as I feel about Milton, if Terrarium comes out with a centralized exchange, it would have to be successful, right? But even if it's not, let's just say they announce it and it actually exists and it's legal. That is enough to get them back to all time highs. If they announce it, it's legal and people actually list on it, major tokens list on it. Now they're actually generating revenue and now it's a freaking diamond. A DeFi project turned centralized exchange will become a blue chip, period, point blank. Will it happen? We don't know. But those are my thoughts on Lily Finance and Terrarium, and I hope that helps. So, Jay, you got anything to add to that? But I'm pretty sure we think exactly the same when it comes to no, those two. Nope, they're both the same. Same, just different. <laughs> All right, you can continue. I'm, by the um, way, I'm, I'm playing I'm playing Justin's role today and Justin's playing my role today. So yeah, I'm kind of like playing backseat today. Did, uh, check the private chat when yeah. you get a second. Uh, Crypto Instagram says, what happens when you need a firmware update? You just lock the F up? Yeah, yeah. who, <laughs> who yeah. knows? You just start seizing up like, oh, yeah. that's funny. Larry Appleton says, love the shop. Thank you guys. No problem, Larry. Uh, pop with the SATA Realty and SATA shop. Not going to happen, apparently. I don't know. I'd pull it up just for the laughs. Uh, Larry Appleton says, says uh, T.I. is breaking it down, and then Timsky says, Can you look at ACB Aurora Cannabis, please? I'm assuming oh, that's God, a no, Timsky, you don't want to look at Aurora Cannabis. Listen, my, my wife buys this thing, and only because she likes weed. What, <laughs> is that is that only what is that like three, four dollars? Yeah, but listen, man, until weed is legal, stay away from weed stocks, trade whatever you want. But uh, oh, all right, I'll pull it up. Oh, it's a dollar thirty-two, even worse. Yeah. With five cents of movement, what the hell is that? Those are auto. That, that's the gap feature I was telling you about. That, that uh, oh, okay, works okay. Got you, got you, got you. So, all right, listen. The Eesh, only that's ugly. The only reason why these stocks ran right. We talk about the weed stocks, right? You talk about Tilray. You talk about Aurora Cannabis. You talk about uh, what's the other one? I don't remember. I think all we played was like Tilray. There was, there might have been one other one that was. There was another weird. one. It, it, it's another ticker, like another small ticker. But look yeah, at this. This ran like crazy in the bull market. This was, this was a bull market, but it was also the mixture of people thought Democrats were going to be able to push. This is when Biden hadn't got elected yet, or he was going to get elected. They thought the Democrats were going to be able to push legal legalizing marijuana. Now, until this actually happens. These are going to sit down here during a bear market because nobody cares about them. These are what you call small cap stocks. The first thing that go in a stock market bear market is people sell all smart small caps. The first things that start to explode and go crazy during a bull market are small cap stocks. So if you want to start accumulating it now, it's a gamble. And the reason why is because it can also go away during a bear market, right? To the point where you can't trade it any longer. So you can, you, you can take the risk to accumulate it, or you can just wait until there's an actual bill legalizing marijuana, which is probably not gonna happen for quite some time, right? But those are my thoughts on Aurora Cannabis. I've traded multiples of the uh, the weed category. I, I can't remember the last one. There's one more, I just can't remember it, but go ahead. Nah, I, I mean, I agree. Like, if anything, wait till it gets to like five or six bucks, pay a little bit more, but play for the security that it's not going away. Because I think there, I mean, if this thing gets too low, they could threaten to take it off of uh, off of like the NASDAQ. And yeah. that's not what you want. After so. it trades under certain thresholds, they have like certain thresholds you have to keep. And if you don't hold those thresholds for like a month or something like that, then they can take you off. So yeah, so just, just be, be careful. careful with that. Yep. Uh, v says, thank you, T-Hubs. And then Crypto Instigator says Justin has a red hoodie on. That's right, I do have a red hoodie on. Rubber. And I got a I got a video for you guys. And uh, this will segue into the big news of the day. So it's like three seconds. Go for it. Find it. There it is. Oops. Wait. Did I, did I share audio? I had to turn my I had to turn my music off. It's the one thing you can control oh, yeah. that you just don't know to control. <laughs> yeah, because I can't ever hear it. I yeah. know. <laughs> All right. You better not give me a copyright strike. Not from the cloud. 
That was it. Oh, yeah. That- Enough <laughs> from the cloud. That was it, right? Because today there was the Senate hearing for uh, FTX, right? Yeah. And um, I only watched maybe about, I don't know, 30 minutes of it. It was uh, it was really, really, really long. Like those Senate hearings, they last hours. And I was not about to sit through. But there was one senator in the very beginning who came out. And this is what he had to say about crypto. And I'm not sure if any of the other articles will say this because I haven't read any of them, full disclosure, but I'm sure we're gonna learn some crazy stuff. But he said that cryptocurrency poses a national security risk. You gotta be kidding me. Crypto poses a national security risk to the United States of, United States of America. Please someone tell me how. Please tell me, you know what? I know how because a ton of wealthy people lost a ton of money and they're pissed. Mm. And the fact that these lawmakers are now under the hook to try to get something done for them because that's vote. It's not national security, it's job security, their job security. That's what is posed the risk. So I hate when they do that. I feel like they're criminalizing, um, they're, they're criminalizing uh, crypto in a sense. Like, yeah, there's been a lot of scandals. There's been a lot of, uh, theft and you know a lot of untrustworthy people but at the same time there's also been a lot of people who've made a ton of money too in crypto like they just forget about all that and they just go straight to the bad so you know it's just it's, I, it's a little ridiculous i mean to say that it's a it's a security risk is, is, is so it's so it's so exactly what they wanted out of ftx right yeah like it, it's exactly what they wanted out of ftx like i feel like the more I hear from this story, the more I feel like there were more puppet masters in control. Because what we saw from Sam Bankman Free yesterday was basically him being controlled by a puppet master, right? You are going to make all this money, but you're going to have to be our fall guy. When you look at his speeches and compare them to his speech yesterday, just, you know, we had a body language expert who felt like yesterday in here telling us about the body language. I went back and I looked at some of his speeches before. He was sitting upright, he was talking, and he still dressed like a bum, but he was still confident in his speech. Yesterday, what we see? Every time he talked, he was talking like this, right? That let me know, like, he didn't really want to be in that position, but I felt like it was the deal he made, right? Like, mm. one, I don't feel like he didn't know. I knew he, I feel like he was complicit in it, Maybe he didn't think his role was going to come to an end so soon, but I, I I almost, I would bet, like I would bet a good majority of the house to say that this was a coordinated attack on crypto in some form or fashion. And they used FTX because it, it's like when the government does something, they do it too much, right? Like they, they made FTX too good and then they crashed it. You know what I'm saying? They, they made it by Miami arenas and, and approve, you know, get approval from some of the top athletes in the world, right? Like, and then they had the chart going crazy and they, 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 they sparked this dude up, wrote stories about him like he was the next JP Morgan. It's just like, why would you choose? If you ever heard this dude talk, there's no way you're picking him. But if you want to puppet master him, he's the perfect person to pick. The perfect person to speak. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just think this is exactly what I expected they would do. And yeah, it, well, and then, oh, 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 go ahead. Well, I was going to say, if we, if we have time, I actually found a video. It's a, it's a, from two weeks ago where a body language expert is talking about him and his uh his body language. So we can check that out. All right, man. Give, give me a second. I wanted to respond to Timsky. Timsky, there was another penny stock, and I think it actually got delisted. That's what I was looking for. Canopy is is on the list right now, but there was another one. I think it was like Sundial or something like that. Or oh, Sundial. it was Sundial because we, <laughs> we tried to long it. We were going to long Sundial, but Sundial actually ended up trading below a dollar for, like uh, Pop was saying, it traded below a dollar for 30 days, and they actually delisted it. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about some of these penny stocks. So just be careful out there. Um, whatever happened to CVT? I don't know. Um, I think I've talked to Vern in the background, right? And I think they're still working. I'm pretty sure they're still working, working on something to bring back to the forefront. I don't know. When they come back out, we'll know, right? We'll, we'll talk to them and see what's up. I think they had a really good project or really good utility.
I love to have him back on. Crypto Instigator says, then he hopped into the Discord chat. If any of you are not in the Discord, what is wrong with you? Join today. I enjoy having fun and learning at the same time. Not a paid advertiser. Let's go. The, oh, then it then he hopped into the what is he talking? He's talking about me. I don't know. Oh, yeah, no. I, I mean, it's all good, bro. It's all good. Yeah, but Discord is where it's at. Discord is definitely where it's at. They criminalized Bitcoin at the beginning and people missed out on big money. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. They, they they did the same thing with Bitcoin in the beginning because they thought they thought that they could kill it before it got started. Well, they did. They knocked it down 80 percent, but they didn't realize like that was just going to become the norm for Bitcoin. It was going to run up thousands of percents and then reverse 80 percent only to go up 2000 percent. So, yeah, I mean, they know what they're doing. man. Um, and then coordinated failure. They all in it just to make regular people doubt until only they can say it's safe because of them. Exactly. Can't tell me he didn't periodically check on his 20 billion. Come on. Come on. You, if y'all believe that, I got some. Look, and the crazy shit is like this. This is this is the, the, the most egregious shit that I keep hearing. I really have lost all respect for uh, what is his name? The Shark Tank dude. What is his name? Oh, um, Mr. Wonderful. Mr. I'm not calling him that. Kevin O'Leary. Kevin, Kevin O'Leary. Yeah, Kevin yeah. O'Leary has lost all respect for me. I'm sorry. And I mean, I don't. I know he doesn't care. He's a multi-billionaire, but I feel like he's in on it because he literally took posted or he literally posted on his Twitter. Like I don't know for some reason, I I I, I believe this kid and I want to help him out for what? Like I lost millions of dollars, but for some reason I still believe this kid. Like. What is there to believe? He ain't telling you nothing. The only thing he's telling you, there was nothing to believe or call him a liar on other than the fact that he was just like, he would change his answers in a way, he would word his answers in a way that he wasn't really answering the question anyway. He basically would say, well, you know, I really didn't know that those things were happening if they were happening. I just didn't know about it. And it's like, come on, man. Like, I, I feel like, I feel like it's all it's all one big ass scam and it's crazy it's crazy i was talking about justin when he only watched a little bit of sbf in congress oh and then he hopped in the discord yeah <laughs> oh yeah 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 i watched like 30 minutes when yeah. I, I hopped in but i hopped in because i saw that uh amc got halted yeah you jumped in quick you're like guys i don't know if you saw this like yeah we, we literally talking about it right now but yeah so go ahead jay all right, so former FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed, aka Scam Bankrupt Fraud, met with the top officials at the CFTC more than 10 times over the past 14 months, says Chairman Rostin Bay Bayman, Baynam, some. Anyway, this dude Rostin, he was the one who was actually testifying before uh, Congress. It wasn't uh, Sam Bankman Freed. So just to give some context there. So CTF uh, Chairman Rostin testified before the Senate committee on agriculture, nutrition, and forestry that Sam Bankman Freed, a former CEO of the bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange FTX, met with the agency 10 times over the past 14 months. Uh, he told the committee that FTX doggedly or doggedly pursued an amendment on the CFTC registered entity Ledger X, and Ledger X is one of the sole FTX entities not to file bankruptcy, according to Bankman. So I think he kind of he got asked this before about Ledger X and he kind of was talking about it. So he and they also were asking him about him pushing legislation uh, through the CFTC. And so this kind of gives some light on what he was trying to do, which was save this part of the uh, FTX company, or at least maybe this was the easiest one he could potentially save, which just gives him a bad light with all with everything saying, well, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. But then it's like, well, certain things survive. Why? I, I don't know if we we'll ever know the answer. Um, but okay, so the amendment, or let me let me start up here. So, Benman testified Thursday before the Senate committee on okay, so we talked about that. The CTC head told senators that the meeting with Bankman Freed centered around FTX dogged desire to amend the clearinghouse license for Ledger X LLC, which FTX bought in 2021 and is overseen by the CFTC. The amendment, which was filed about 12 months ago, would have allowed Ledger X to directly settle crypto derivatives with the involvement of intermediaries. The proposed change was still pending approval by the time FTX filed for bankruptcy earlier this month. 
My team and I met with Mr. Bakeman Freed and his team over the past 14 months. We met 10 times at their office at the request all the relation to this derivatives clearing organization. This clearinghouse application, Benman told them. In the opening statements, Benman said Ledger X has been registered with the CFTC since 2017 and was one of the few FTX entities that didn't file for bankruptcy with FTX last month. Um, so yeah, it goes on to give a little bit more context, but it's just interesting that the, and they, they hit on this too, like the CFTC's role is to kind of stop all this from happening. But if you watch him, he actually said that the CFTC doesn't really have as much uh, power as like the SEC. Like the SEC has way more power in litigation than the CFTC does. So it's kind of interesting to see this shift now, like the SEC might get control of crypto because of everything that's going on. And this guy was kind of, he was making the case that there needed to be, um, there needed to be oversight but at the same time, he was like, but we aren't the ones who can really do that. So it's like, well, then why are you, why, why, like, what do you do then? You know what I mean? Like, why, why do you oversee this stuff if you can't do anything about it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting, man. Like I said, like, it's just the hearing, the hearing itself, if he wasn't going to be there, I just don't understand the point of him putting him doing the hearing. I, I I think what irritates me the most is the fact that they're doing all of these hearings, but but Sam Bankman can't go talk to people on Twitter. It's like they're purposely doing these hearings with people that don't even understand crypto. Like they have no idea what crypto is. Like they, they think they know, but they don't. They're trying to turn it into a political battle and war. Shout out to Cool and Chris. Cool and Chris made it in the building. He said, Yerk, what's going on? T and Justin, appreciate the alarm. Yeah, I was just about to say, I wrote you an alarm on Twitter, so you ain't have to uh, tell me to call you. But yeah, uh, it's all good, man. Thanks for showing up, bro. It's no no big deal, bro. I just wanted to let you know we was live. But yeah, yeah I'm about to take a, a phone call, so I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the link to the next story. Yeah, no problem. Hold on, guys. Uh, let's see here. Let's see her. All right, Justin has to take a phone call here and say, "Is this the same story you was just looking at?" Yeah, 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 it's the same one. You said you said this is me to the next story. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a story that I had pulled up. We haven't gone over this one. Okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Are you gonna take the call or no? Oh well, I'm I'm waiting. You can go ahead and go though, and then I'll I'll chime in. All right. So Washington lawmakers hold on to crypto holdings despite calls for new laws in wake of FTX collapse. Wait, this is oh, this is a story you're on. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I'm tweaking because it was your. Oh, stream. it was the same one. Yeah. Yeah, I was tweaking because <laughs> it's your stream. I'm like, what? This is, this is weird. Uh, that's funny. All right. At least nine lawmakers in Washington across both the House and Senate have traded over a dozen different crypto stocks since last year. All right. Before I go even further, these are the same people that are telling you crypto is a national security risk. Think about that for a second. At least nine lawmakers in Washington across both the House and Senate have traded over a dozen different crypto stocks since last year. All of the offices contacted, only one said they had sold their crypto stock holdings after the FTX disaster, meaning they still hold it. They some diamond hands. Another lawmaker, Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama, you know who that is, disclosed at a Senate Agri Agriculture Committee hearing about FTX on Thursday that he too holds some crypto assets. I wonder what the word some means, right? I wonder how much crypto these people are actually holding. I'd be very curious to see, very, very curious to see. So let's get into it. The collapse of cryptocurrency exchange, FTX has pulled a host of other companies down with it and threatens the stability of the digital coin marketplace. But some lawmakers on Capitol Hill are holding on to their crypto investments, even as they call for tighter regulations. Think, y'all, think. At least nine lawmakers across the House and Senate, we already read all that. All right, so we talk about Tommy Tuberville. Out of 10 offices contacted, only one said that they sold their crypto stock holdings after FTX imploded. Coupling in Marie Newman, uh, Democrat, Illinois, who lost her bid for re-election, owner owned crypto stock up in crypto stock up until last week, recently sold her digital token stocks and industry took a hit. 
So they're selling Coinbase, right? The actual stock, right? So Congressman, Congresswoman, news, newsman, husband sold their Coinbase stock last week due to the volatile nature of the sector. Marcus Garza, a spokesman for Newman, told CNBC in an email. Congressional records show Garza and her husband previously held positions in multiple crypto-related stocks, including Coinbase, a cryptocurrency trading platform. Newman and her husband recently disclosed a January joint purchase of Coinbase stock worth between $1,000 and $15,000. I don't know how you narrow that down to $15,000, <laughs> but okay. The disclosure reports for all law lawmakers only show a range of how much, oh, okay. That's why she put it in there. So Coinbase stock price as of Thursday morning is down by over half of a percentage point. Kendrick Payne, an ethics attorney at the Campaign Legal Center, says lawmakers who own crypto assets have a conflict of interest in trying to write laws to rein in the industry following the collapse of FTX. It's funny, but I feel like they have a conflict of interest to even trade stocks, considering they help write the laws or they know about the laws that change the trajectory of multiple stocks in the market. But okay. This is another example of how even well-intentioned lawmakers can't accept, escape the perception of corruption when they own individual stocks of crypto, Payne said in an email. Voters won't likely trust the lawmakers who own crypto. What will regulate it to their detriment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want you to see the hypocrisy in this shit. Like, like just okay. So this dude is basically saying, if you own crypto stocks, there's no way you could then be okay or trusted to regulate crypto stocks. Hmm. How many stocks do you think they own that they write in regulations for right now? They may not be writing regulations for it, but they damn sure are doing things that affect the stock. I don't know. Uh, let me think of one. Uh, what's the COVID stock that came out? Mar uh, no, was Moderna. Mar Moderna. Moderna. Remember Moderna? Do you remember how crazy Moderna went in one day, the day before COVID was released, and that Moderna was going to be the actual stock or the actual company that was going to make vaccines? I wonder which politician was loading up on that freaking stock before it happened. Shanshi for Shoshi, right? Like, you know what I mean? like, like, dude, like, yeah, you can't be serious. They, they just blow my mind with this stuff when it's about crypto. It's like they change, they forget everything else they've been doing for years, and they switch it up. Anyway. No, 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 no. He, he, they're, they're not switching it up. He said, he said, uh, voters won't trust lawmakers who own crypto will regulate it to their to like the, they they won't hurt regu to hurt themselves. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm yeah, but they do the same thing with the stocks. Like it's just, it's the same. It like this ethics guy is right, and they he's should... right, but he's pointing out what they do to the entire stock market. Is what I'm oh, saying. Oh yeah, no. Oh yeah, no. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, which is crazy, right? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I was like, you're correct, but how is that any different from what they're doing for the entire stock market? That's yeah, why it's not. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> He's like, yeah, no, this is what he said. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. He noted that these conflicts can be avoided if Congress passed laws that put a ban on members and their spouses trading individual stocks unless they're in a blind trust. We know that shit's not going to happen. So just, no. just, just hang, up, hang them shoes up. Roger Schaub, who was the director of the United States Office of Government Ethics under former President Barack Obama and for a short stint Donald Trump, says lawmakers shouldn't hold crypto assets when they are looking at writing new laws to tighten oversight of the industry in the wake of FTX candle. <laughs> uh, okay, here's a, here's, a, here's a question for you guys. So you understand what I'm talking about, because some of y'all might not get the joke. If I am in the House, the House member, the House leader, and I can pass laws, or I'm overseeing laws that have to do with chip making, meaning computer chips, right? If I can pass laws to either restrict, lower, or increase the amount of chips that are gonna be out, and I know for a fact that law is gonna get passed in the next three to six months, and then I go and buy, I don't know, a stock like NVIDIA, I don't know. If I go load up on a stock and stock options for NVIDIA, and then six months later, mysteriously, that law gets passed, now my stock options are worth millions of dollars. 
is that also fair or is that a, a, a conflict of interest see the hypocrisy in this shit that pisses me off is they say all of this stuff when it's the little man getting paid crypto represents the little man getting paid now there's some big dogs that's out there getting paid but DeFi and crypto and the, the, the crypto represents a movement of the little man stepping up and this is forever going to be wrong with our government i don't know if we will ever fix it it probably won't be in my lifetime but this is what is wrong right here it's like when crypto comes to mind yeah you gotta fix this shit this you know you can't do that but what about nvidia stock you ain't got a problem with that no okay anyway go to unusual wells go to his go to his pin tweet on his Twitter page and just go see how many politicians were trading stocks prior to certain regulation being passed that directly affected the stocks that they were in before they skyrocketed up. And you tell me who the real true pump and dumpers are. The really manipulated shit. If you want to compare crypto to stocks, it's not even close. Crypto doesn't have enough money to illustrate the amount of manipulation that truly goes on but this is the narrative that they're going to try to twist that they're going to try to spoon feed us through you know amazon um prime eight episodes and shit like that you do yourself a favor go watch billions billion billionaires or whatever it's called on uh on amazon prime and i'll show you the real manipulation all right bro oh sorry i get a little upset so it is outrageous that members of congress okay we read that the lack of internal controls and a number of questionable decisions by former CEO Sam Bankman Free are shining a bright light on the scant oversight of the industry. Some of the lawmakers who hold crypto stocks have criticized the failure of Congress to pass laws. That would give financial regulators like the Security Exchange Commission more authority to police the industry, but not the stock market and, okay, whatever. Senator Pat Toomey, who is also ranking member of the Senate Banking Committee, tweeted last month after the FTX collapse that the impact to the to Americans from today's bankruptcy filing by FTX official might have been mitigated if there were a sensible, legislatively authorized American regulatory framework for digital assets. Come on. Toomey is retiring from Congress and being replaced by Democrat John Fetterman, in which he probably will go and invest in some crypto stocks. But anyway. Despite the calls for clear regulations, Toomey signaled to the CNBC he has no plans to sell his cryptocurrency investments. He and his wife own between two and 30,000 combined between Grayscale Ethereum Trust, which we talked about yesterday, and Grayscale Bitcoin Trust as of the end of last year, according to Toomey, Toomey's latest annual financial disclosure reviewed by CNBC. Greater, Grayscale Ethereum Trust represents an investment vehicle that's meant to hold Ethereum assets a cryptocurrency, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is an investment vehicle with the purpose of holding Bitcoins. Toomey told CNBC, hold on, hold on for dear life. This is Toomey, right? When asked about whether he plans to sell crypto stocks following FTX's collapse. Hold on is an abbreviation for hold on for dear life, a common phrase used by crypto investors when they have no plans to sell their industry stock, even if prices are falling. The price of the Grayscale Ethereum Trust is down almost 5%. The price of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is down almost 2%. Let's go, go invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum, genius. Representatives for almost all the other lawmakers who have purchased stock in cryptocurrency did not respond when asked whether their bosses plan to sell off their digital to token assets following the FTS collapse. Guys, I can read this all day. The bottom line is, the market has been corrupt for a very long time. And I'm not just talking about crypto, but we said this, we said this months ago, and we've been talking about it even more in the shop lately, is the fact that the closer we get to the bottom, the more the, the fuckery is gonna come because they wanna take it down to the bottom, not to get rid of it. If they wanted to get rid of it, they wouldn't have politicians politicians wouldn't be investing in this thing at all they don't want to get rid of it they want to take it down and then make it seem unsafe so they can take it over more and more i read these articles the more and more i realize i'm right i'm right and i know i'm right so anyway let's get into these comments guys and then we'll move on so just trying to shake us out yep 
Let's see, they know this is all facade to mislead the American public. Yep. I agree. I agree. I agree 100%, man. I agree 100%. Yeah. 10, 10, what, between 1,000 and 15,000. That's what we invested. So there, now we're being transparent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and then let's see. Dang, I wish I could file my taxes like that. Yeah, I made between, yeah, exactly. $1 and 150 k There you go. You mean when Nancy bought all of the stock? Exactly, exactly. Come on, Crypto Instigator, tell the truth. What's going on, cool? Nate, Chance, Chancey, you don't, yeah, Chancey, yeah. Chancey, Chancey you don't see, you right? Fancy Shamuski, <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> uh great show as always thanks crypto chevy man we try over here pat to me what's going on please pat to me is a few months away from uh f all y'all we out yeah he he using words like hodl i feel like he he, he about two steps away from being a crypto guru <laughs> if they wanted it if they wanted it crypto over they just pull the plug they can't they can't they and they can't because here's here's why samuel here's why they can't pull the plug on crypto they can pull the plug on some cryptos, but they can't pull the plug on crypto because crypto has managed to do things already that fucks with their, it, it fucks with, it's a conflict of interest for them to pull the plug. What do I mean by that? Well, Google, crypto's managed to work its way into some of the biggest names, Apple, Google, uh, you know, that list that we came out with six months ago where Bitcoin is literally being accepted in so many other places. Once Google start, once Bitcoin and Ethereum started that mass adoption, now it becomes a conflict of interest at some level. I don't know what that level is for lawmakers to try to pull the plug on crypto when large companies, i.e. Apple and Google, two of the largest companies in the stock market at all, have a vested interest in crypto. Once that happens, now Apple, Google, who owns yo ass, you can't pull the plug on crypto no more. The only thing you can do now, because Apple, Google don't really have exposure to crypto, they have a vested interest, but not exposure. But now what they can do is they can manipulate the price so they can get in and now we can all sleep in the same bed. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a, it's a thinking game. And the more you sit back and think about it, the more you can start to put the pieces together. It's like, nah, crypto ain't going nowhere. They just want in and they want to be able to control it and tax it and then have their own token. That's all this is. It's a hostile takeover. That's what I reckon it to. It's a hostile takeover. So I hope that helps, Sam. Tumi is probably a DJ. <laughs> facts, facts. Well, I mean, if they really want crypto over, sorry. Yeah, I, I hear you, I hear you. Don't forget, crypto isn't American. It's worldwide. Come and get it. Exactly, Timsky. 100%. And it's competition, right? I, I, I didn't even think about that aspect of it. The fact that it's not just American, it's worldwide. Like, it, if you take away crypto from the U.S., that doesn't mean that they're not going to use it in, you know, Brazil and other countries, right? Like, do you really want to miss out on that opportunity as a country? No, you don't. It, it, crypto's embedded in the world now. It, you can't just pull the plug. Like, you just can't, right? You just can't. What's going on, Bo? What's good, fam? How you doing, man? Hope you're having a good one, bro. All right, let's move on to our next story. Uh, let's see here. Cryptonews.net. Let me pull this up. Uh, all right, here we go. Oh, God, here we go. Sorry, I haven't read any of these stories, so they're all coming as a surprise to me. Justin was supposed to be my co-host today, but he got a phone call, so we're just going to excuse him for now. So CFTC chair suggests pause to overhaul Senate bill following FTX debacle. And here we go, right? FTX may not have happened if it was under the Commodity Futures Trading Commission's watch. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. Like, listen, listen to this. Just, just listen to this. Like, come on. Y'all believe this? It's like exactly what we was just talking about. It's like, what? Like, give it to us and it'll be okay. This is exactly what I'm talking about. FTX may not have happened if it was under the Commodity and Futures Trading 
commissions watch. It's head, it's head argued Thursday. CFTC chair Rostin Benyon testifying in the first of several congressional hearings on the collapse of the crypto exchange before the Senate Agriculture Committee on Thursday said his agency could not have been, could could not have prevented FTX's collapse as it was not an entity regulated by his agency. He asked the lawmakers for broader authority to directly oversee spot cash market exchanges. That's all exchanges, which are not currently regulated by any federal agency. Tokens that are not deemed security are overseen by the Security and Exchange Commission. Most of the senators did not seem to make much of a distinction between FTX US, the company operating within the US, and FTX.com. The global exchange based in the Bahamas, FTX.com, has had the broader issues, including apparently sending customers and corporate funds to Almeda Research, its sister company, which that's allegedly because we all know Sam Bankman Free came out and told us he had no idea that was happening. If it was happening, he had no idea. Yeah, I saw that, Shilton. I saw that. We got it pulled up. Uh, still, the sort this sort of activity would be prohibited if the Digital Commodities Consumer Protection Act, a bill sponsored by committee heads Debbie, whatever, had been a law. Famous said. The DCCPA would ban the commingling of customers and, cooper and corporate money and also require better corporate governance and actual bookkeeping, which when you're on a level such as FTX, the fact that there was no actual accurate bookkeeping being done besides him doing the bookkeeping and not an actual accountant, in my opinion, is still unacceptable. But that's just me. Still, he suggested revisiting the bill to ensure it addresses the range of alleged misconduct that may occur at other companies. In other words, give it to us, we'll make it right. And now you just gave us a reason to make it even tighter, right? Given the circumstances of the past weeks, few weeks, I think we should take a pause and look at the bill and make sure there are no gaps or no holes, he said. Where the bill may be strengthened, Disclosures around financial information of entity, the crypto entity and conflicts of interest, obviously an issue that many members have talked about today, given the brazen conflicts that occurred at the non-regulatory entity. These people are not your friend. They're not. They are not your friend. I guarantee you what they're looking to do is definitely not help you. What they're looking to do is introduce a bill that's probably even more stringent and more beneficial to institutional traders and investors than actually you. But that's just my opinion. With or without a pause, Bayman stressed the importance of moving quickly to pass legislation that could give his agency greater oversight of spot markets. Strengthening the bill and, and filling the gaps is one thing. We need to move forward as soon as possible. We don't want this to happen again in the next few months. You see how they like how he's like, Yo, we gotta go. We need to, we need to fix this right now. Oh, okay, all right, and have the risk of customers losing money because of these gaps. He said. Now, where were they during Three Arrows Capital? Why didn't they need to do that quickly? Where were they during Voyager? Why didn't they need to get regulation out then? Where were they during Luna Classic or Terra Luna? What's the difference? The difference is, is this was the plan, in my opinion. This was the one that they knew would rust, rustle some feathers, and now they have a reason to attack. So, the art of war, in my opinion. So, Bayman said, at present, all of the CFTSC's crypto related enforcement activities are tied to tips and whistleblowers, and that is not healthy. He wants his agency to be able to spot possible issues itself. They want to keep their eye on everything. We need registration of exchanges. We need surveillance of market activity. We need direct relationships with custodians who are holding customer money so that we can prohibit and prevent money moving forward. He said there are there are so many tools in comprehensive regulatory framework that will put us at, at us as boots on the ground in the entity to prevent all of these illegal activities. So in a nutshell, they want to be 
the captain save a whole of, of, of crypto. Like this, that's it. Just is what it is. Like that. You know, if you don't know what that is, what I, what I basically mean is this is the perfect opportunity. Surprisingly, right? This is the perfect opportunity for them to come in and put their cape on and just be like, oh, we can save crypto. Give it to us. We'll keep an eye on it. My question is, we give it to you and you keep an eye on it. Who's going to keep an eye on y'all crooked asses? Because we know whatever's coming out in that bill is not going to be all for the benefit of crypto. It's definitely going to benefit the alphabet boys in some, some form or fashion, right? Who's in your pocket, right? Who do you aim to please? Because it's not the people, right? It's probably some other entity that you answer to. That being said, pay attention. Because when that bill does drop and get voted on, you're going to want to know what's in it. Because you don't want to be surprised later when you get a tax bill. You won, you made four forty thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars in crypto and by the time the government's done with your ass you actually only bring home 10 right so just pay attention uh and then shilton says apple wants 30 percent of gas fees for nft transfers on the coinbase app so they can collect it via in-app purchase yeah apple is tripping coinbase actually even put out a statement on that i believe let me see if justin has it up here <laughs> all right um let me go over here to coinbase because i believe coinbase had it they actually um had it up coinbase I think it was coinbase was it coinbase wallet shooting that put it up hang on a second i know i saw it on here coinbase wallet Yeah, here it is right here. Coinbase Wallet says, you might have noticed you can't send NFTs on Coinbase Wallet iOS anymore. This is because Apple blocked our last app release until we disabled the feature. Apple's claim is that the gas fees required to send NFTs need to be paid through their in-app purchase system. How, how exactly is that supposed to happen, right? Like how, right? Oh, so... Apple claims that they, they want the gas fees, basically, right? In-app purchase system does not support crypto. For anyone who understands how NFTs and blockchains work, this is clearly not possible. Exactly, this is exactly what that says. Apple's pri proprietary in-app purchase system does not support crypto, so we couldn't comply even if we tried. This is akin to Apple trying to take a cut of fees for every email that gets sent over open internet protocols. The biggest impact from this policy change is on iPhone users that own NFTs. If you hold an NFT in a wallet on an iPhone, Apple just made it a lot harder to transfer that NFT to other wallets or gift it to your friends or family. Simply put, Apple has introduced new policies to protect their profits at the expense of consumer investment in NFTs. A developer innovation across the crypto ecosystem. We hope this is an oversight on Apple's behalf and an inflection point for further conversations with the ecosystem. At Apple, we're here and want to help. This is, <laughs> and Tammy said, it's weird. My MetaMask app doesn't have this issue. <laughs> Maybe it's just you. But yeah, so, I mean, if you're using Coinbase wallet, like I have a Coinbase wallet, but I don't, I think I got like, I had one NFT over there and I actually ended up sending it to my MetaMask wallet a while ago. But to me, this just further solidifies one of the things I've been saying, which is I don't, I don't really fuck with, I, I fuck with MetaMask for the DeFi wallet of choice, period, point blank. I used to say this when I was promoting NFTs, when I was talking about NFTs, and I would say, listen, everybody would always have an issue with Coinbase wallet somehow, some way. And I'm just like, I just don't understand if you like Coinbase, use it. But if you would like to use, you know, basically be universally accepted, why not just use MetaMask? That being said, this is some real shady shit that Apple is pulling right here. Like this is shady. Like I feel like Apple should know by now how crypto works. And they should definitely know that 
it's not possible for them to collect a profit of the gas fees that aren't for you. Like they, they nobody gets a cut of the gas fees. Nobody. Apple saying they want a 30% cut of the gas fees is crazy. Like that's crazy. It, Apple has nothing to do with that. Like they, they, there's nothing that they're facilitating other than saying, well, this is basically Apple sinking their ball and going home. Apple's basically saying, we want the ball or you can't play in the game or we're taking our customers with us. The ball being the customers, right? Because Apple has, we just learned yesterday because we were having a conversation about Apple, 50% of people in the country use Apple phone. If 4%, 5% of people in the country or in the world use crypto, that means two and a half percent to three percent of them use it use uh apple phones if those people a good majority of them use coinbase wallet and now want to trade nfts it just got a hell of a lot harder for you so i know people don't like this but you know i have an apple phone but i also got my android you know what i'm saying i love my android so hey the, the main problem is that we got to wear your android so Shout out to uh, uh, Shilton for, for uh, reminding me of this story. I knew I knew I had it up here. I just didn't know exactly where it was at. But that's crazy, man. That's that's absolutely crazy. Yeah, Apple didn't lost their mind. Like I, I, they are not. You are not Vitalik. You don't get the gas fees, bro. Like that's not how that works. Apple acting like the government want a piece of every pie associated with their product. It, it, it's like, of course, people have apps on your wallet. It's like. Let me put this in a little bit more perspective. That would be like them literally charging a percentage. And maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe I, you guys tell me. I've never written an app and I don't know how an app works or an app works. But let's say you have a game on Apple that's an app on Apple, right? Do they charge you for in-game purchases? Meaning if you pay for in-game purchases, does Apple get a kickback? of that in-game purchase. Cause that's basically the equivalent of what they're asking for, except you're asking for it from Coinbase wallet when Coinbase wallet doesn't even have access to the gas fee money. You're basically saying, well, if they're gonna pay gas fees, we're gonna charge you 30% of what they have to pay. And that's the fee for staying on Coinbase wallet. It's crazy, it's crazy. Yeah, Coinbase just took the gloves off. Yeah, they 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 came out with a thread. I was shocked by this. I was shocked by this. Apple was a wild boy. Yeah. Gmail charging you guys fees to send email. Exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. They they went in though. They went in. Yes, they get a they do get a percentage. Okay. Okay, my bad, guys. I had to blow my nose. Okay, so Apple does get a percentage. Okay, so let's use another example. Let's say you own an app, right? And every time people take an in-game purchase, right, you have to pay a fee or there's an automatic fee that goes to the, or like a royalty fee that automatically goes to the owner of the company. Now, you don't even get that royalty, but it goes to the, the owner. Now, Apple wants a cut, a 30% cut of that royalty fee that you don't even have access to. So now you have to basically pay Apple to list, plus you have to pay them money out of your own revenue stream because you're not seeing that royalty. You have to pay Apple just to stay on their platform. That's crazy. That's insane. Ah, uh, yeah. I believe they get a cut of in-app purchases on percentage base, I think. Yeah, I would have to look it up, but I'm not I'm not 100% sure. But thank you guys. I'm sure companies pay Apple a certain amount of the in-app purchasing for using the platform. Yes, that's that is true. What I'm saying and and Coinbase wallet is is paying that. I'm I'm certain they are, right? Because they're probably paying they probably pay to list their app on there and they're probably paying uh whatever percentage for transaction fees or something like that, right? But they're not asking for transaction fees. 
they're asking for a percentage of the gas fees that Coinbase doesn't even doesn't even have a cut in, right? Like that's that's not how gas fees work. Like Coinbase doesn't get a kickback on the gas fees. They get a kickback. They get their money from the transaction fees. Apple's basically saying, well, we don't care if you get a kickback or not. We want 30%. Do you guys remember how much gas fees were in 2020? <laughs> I'll just let that sink in. Do y'all remember paying three, $400 in gas fees in 2020? If they agree to this, 30%, Apple's going to make billions. If, if Coinbase wallet has to basically say, all right, we made our money off transaction fees, but we got to give Apple a percentage of the transaction fees. But now we're going to have to add in this. This basically it's a it's a it's a poll. It's a toll tax. You got to pay the toll. Right. So it's crazy, man. Before it came out, the Apple charges 30 percent from the app developer in app purchases. Yes. But yes. And I, and I agree with you. But, th but this is not this is not that like they're not asking for an uh, in-app purchase. They're asking for a 30% gas fee. Unless unless Coinbase wallet is misspeaking, which I probably doubt that they are, but they're, Apple wants 30% of the gas fee, not the transaction fee, the gas fee. Last I checked, nobody gets the gas fee. It's just the gas fee, right? Like, I mean, somebody gets it, but it ain't coming to Coinbase wallet. Uh, same thing with MetaMask, what stops them say, oh, hey, MetaMask, we need some of that money from the fees. Hey, again, Android. Plus, I like to trade on my, on my uh, laptops anyway. So, but yeah, I, I just go to my Android, man. And if Android start doing it, I just trade off my PC. Yeah, that's crazy. Followers, follower. Sticking to MetaMask on my PC, I guess. Yep, four, I'm the same way. Uh, Apple needs to negotiate that with Vitalik. Exactly. That's what, that's what I'm saying, Luke. Like, this is not a conversation that you can have with Coinbase Wallet. Like, you can't, they're basically trying to bully Coinbase Wallet into saying, I don't care if you pay, if you get money from the gas fee or not. Now you're going to pay us an extra 30% of what, and, and now Coinbase has to go in and calculate how much, you know, it's not like they get a report from Vitalik every year that says, hey, you transferred this much and you got this much in gas fees. So I'm sure that's an extra accounting step, right? Uh, Apple needs to negotiate that with Vitalik. Coinbase doesn't make money off gas fees. Plus, Coinbase needs all their money just like Apple does. Exactly. So is Coinbase going to ask fees from Apple for Apple users buying crypto off of Coinbase with their Apple phone? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just, it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. Like, that's like, that's crazy. Like, again, I fuck with Apple, but not because I like the shit they do sometimes. This is crazy. Oh man. Oh, Justin actually posted the story now. Hang on. Let me get the pull up the story. All right. And then I'll never come back to ETH. I'm cool on uh Valis. <laughs> I feel you, bro. I feel you. Google get 30% of in-app purchases too. Yeah, but again, in-app purchases I feel like is warranted. Cause I feel like to use my, you wouldn't be getting these in-app purchases. You wouldn't be getting, and that's the difference. Okay, great point, Crypto Institute. If you were not on my platform, right? If you came to my house and every day at my house, I have a bunch of hungry people at 12 o'clock, right? But you couldn't even come to my house unless I invited you to my house. I let you drive your 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 lunch truck and you park it in front of my neighborhood where the construction workers is out here. And every day you show up, they buy you out, right? And I ask for a percentage of your sales because without me, you can't get those sales. That's one thing, right? That's in-app purchasing. It's one-on-one, -on -one, right? But if you show up and as soon as you get here, you have to pay you get you you have to pay a parking fee, right? And every time you get here, I charge you a percentage of that parking fee. That's not fair. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, you don't have anything to do with the parking fee, nor are you get seeing any of the money. But I'm saying, well, if you paying them, you need to pay me too. 
it just makes no sense. That's some bully shit. Like <laughs> that's some bully stuff. Like it just makes no sense. Oh man, gas fees are for the people approving the transactions on the blockchain. It, Children, say that shit, children. Thank you for clarifying exactly where they go. So basically, yeah, <laughs> so children, so basically, basically, uh, Apple want to cut, Apple want to cut of the workers that are working to approve the transaction. Like, come, that's, come on, man. You know what that means? Apple co coin coming soon? Exactly, exactly. Corner in the market. You can't trade on our shit because we coming out with our own shit. Apple losing their minds all over again, just like when they released the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I've never liked iOS software. People like the phone over hype only. You know, I'll say this. My whole life, I've been an Android dude. Never used an iPhone until recently when I actually started the business. But I will say this, for business purposes, I like the iPhone and the Apple products. Like once, once you're in, the Apple atmosphere. What's up, brother? What's once up, sorry, guys? Once you're in the Apple atmosphere, it's really good to transfer information. It's easy for me to take a, a thumbnail photo and yeah. just literally airdrop it to my 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 MacBook. And like for businesses per business purposes, I like my Apple better. I do. For everyday use and basically everything else, I like my Android. But hey, this, Hobbs. Hey, what's up, brother? Did you did you read the whole story already? No, I haven't even read the story. We read uh, we read Coinbase's response. <laughs> oh, they re they responded. <laughs> oh, did they? <laughs> oh, did they? <laughs> oh, that's that's. They funny. said Apple's claim is that the gas fees required to this is this is a crazy story, by the way. It, oh, I know. Apple's claim is that the gas fees required to send NFTs need to be paid through their in-app purchase system. That's a that that's a problem for Vitalik, right? So yeah. they well, so that they can collect thirty percent of the gas fees. No, the gas fees do not go through Coinbase wallet. Well, I I, I know, but they don't yeah. know that. This, I, you know, you know. This How story, does Apple not know that? <laughs> but, but no, you know, you know what though? This story because you know Pop told me about this while we were in the Discord and kind of like explained it a little bit and. What I thought about it was this story just again proves to me how much these companies and how much these lawmakers don't, don't understand know. crypto. They really they don't. don't. They see gas fees and they're like, oh, y'all collecting fees? Oh, yeah, y'all really using all that? <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Pay us. You need to pay us our cut. And Coinbase is like, wait, motherfucker. No, that's we, not how this we works. We don't even get, get that. <laughs> yeah, we don't get the money. What do you mean? What do you that's mean? That. You want us to pay 30% of the fees? That means that's out of our pocket. That's what I, I do the same I said, thing. I, I do the said, same thing. I said, man, that's like me allowing you to park outside my house with your food truck every day. At first, I just said, hey, just give me a percentage of your sales because you, you can't get here without me, right? <laughs> and then and then you get here, you got to pay a parking fee. But I'm like, oh, you paying parking fees? I need a cut of that too. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> It's like that's not a cut. That's me giving you money. Like that's yeah, that's exactly. me to the people. That's not a cut. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It just it doesn't it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But hey, Apple, great try. And who knows? Maybe they might end up paying like maybe they might end up paying the gas. The crazy the other crazy thing about the gas fees too is that the gas fees change, right? So then you're asking Coinbase to keep track of all the fees to that's pay you thirty percent. I literally just and they said, probably I don't said, do that. I said, there's a, I said, that's a whole nother accounting department. Like that, yeah. that's literally, you're asking them. I said, do you guys remember how much gas fees were in 2020? Yeah, <laughs> like, like $180. Yeah, y'all yeah, yeah, remember, dude, I remember people paying like two, 300 oh, yeah. per transaction yeah. back in the day. Yeah. I said, Apple would make a killing. I said, but the other part of it is, you know how many transactions happen in a minute on the blockchain? You know how many gas? Like you would literally have to have a department just to, to track the gas fees. Yeah, yeah, they'd have to. Yeah, you're right. They'd have to track the transactions and then track how much they paid in gas for every yeah, single it, transaction that happened. It, yeah, there's it, no way. There's no way. It's, it's, it's impossible. You're talking transfer from wallet to wallet transactions, transfer NFTs to you know other you know buying NFTs, minting NFTs, purchasing crypto, bro. 
they, they, they Apple's trying to make this a lot harder. Than Look, it has to be. I like I like what they said. They said this is akin to Apple trying to take a cut of fees for every email that gets sent over. Yeah, bro, that's what they said. Protocols. That's what they said. They was like, <laughs> this this is literally like sending emails on Gmail and then getting a fee, charging us a fee for every email we send. Like that's yeah. that's basically what you're saying. It makes yeah. no sense. No sense at all. No. But, but again, like I said, this just goes to Apple and them not understanding how crypto works and thinking that this gas fee that Coinbase is charging, which isn't really Coinbase at all, but no. in their mind is Coinbase. They're like, oh, we gonna need a percentage of that gas fee because you that's would, what you're charging them for the transaction. It's like, that's not how this works. You would think that they would do some type of, like they would at least hire somebody that would be like, like there's gotta be one person in there that invests in crypto to be like, <laughs> like what the fuck are y'all talking about? No, we can't do this. Like this, there has to be one person before at least it made it to the PR firm was just like, nah, bro, like that's not how crypto work. Like y'all need to really hire some people in crypto. Like, you know, cause... that's funny that you mentioned that because with Apple being in Silicon Valley and a whole bunch of tech people, you're right. That's you would think saying. that like, you somebody would, would, would invest like, in this crypto. Is, bro, this is not okay. No disrespect to to any DeFi project or anything. Like this is not some fucking low cap shit coin. This is fucking Apple the largest company in the in the world and y'all can't get one person okay maybe not a whole team but y'all ain't got one person that at least knows that vitalik is the person that's eating them goddamn cash <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a wild it, it is a wild story it's funny though it's fun it's fun to talk about something like this because it's just like your mind gets blown with how um, little people yes. know about crypto i mean that's this this is what this story comes down to it comes down to negligence ignorance. it comes down to ignorance it comes down to a, a not willing to to look into things like oh, come on man that's like i said come on man come on man all right so let's <laughs> what up bo yeah let's go bills tonight yo I'm, i live with a patriots fan so i'm oh, not gonna the end of it yeah it's bro patriots, bills night. patriots bills but i'll be i'm gonna be working tonight so you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anyway, Apple blocks the Coinbase wallet on iOS as per the details from a tweet thread by Coinbase. iOS users will be unable to send NFTs from their wallets on iOS devices anymore. Uh, Coinbase also mentioned in the tweet that Apple has blocked their last app release until the feature is disabled by them. That's Apple what I wants. thought. Wait, wait, wait. So, so can anybody confirm if you haven't? Matter of fact, I'm gonna confirm if you. So, if you haven't, oh shit! Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We got We got to switch over. All right, we're going. We're going right now, Dion. We're coming over. What happened? What, what happened? I would explain why our shit is so. Uh, there ain't a lot of people in here. Hang on. Oh, is the interview Mario's yeah. interview? Yeah, he said he's speaking in his space right now. Hang on, guys. I'm jumping over here right now. We got to hear this shit. Mm-hmm. The first day, uh, well, the actually bankruptcy declaration seemed to say that uh, that was actually the case. At 4.30 a.m., you finally resigned with your parents. Uh, there you were convened with the lawyers and the parents. Um, and uh, so, so, so why... Why are you hesitant to mention the fact that your parents were present to that meeting? Uh, I'm in general hesitant because of there are limits to what you can say about um, some conversations that involve legal legal counsel, and so I was I was just being has enough an abundance of caution there. But, but if, I mean, if there's an importance you, here that that you want to dive into. I'm, I'm happy to do it. Well, no, I'm just I'm just interested here. I mean, I mean, you you said you you're, you're not really interested in taking your legal counsel right now. Who's representing yep. you right now at this stage? Oh, I do have legal counsel right now. I I have new legal counsel, and um, okay, how are you, you know, paying I, for them? I, I need Pretty to ask one question yeah. before we're moving on to a topic. One uh, one more question um, about the Alameda getting the funds. Why he cut them all. Um, so just quickly, and I'll give you the mic back for the line of questioning. So the dollars, Sam, that were sent yep. to Alameda because FTX didn't have a bank account. So yep. they were used by Alameda like it's their own money uh, when they were really customer assets all along. And Caroline, you, is that correct? Uh, sorry. I, I, can, can, can I kind of extend on this question? Um, 
It's no, because the question wasn't asked to you. This question is no, no. So let him, I let him, I let him, I let, 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 let Sam brought it to Kate. Is is your Sam just extend quickly to that question, if, and then I'll let Sam answer it. Yeah, I just just kind of just to extend on it a little bit. Um, in regards to the funds at Alameda, um, was you know obviously we saw Brett and we saw Sam, um, leave from uh obviously FTX US and also Alameda, um, sometime last year, which kind of leads to a, a, a I guess a highlighter point that something went wrong back then what position do you know of a position exactly that alameda took or was it with uh the collateralized instruments we were talking about earlier did perhaps say sam uh trebeco or, or or caroline did they happen to get involved within the lunar and the 3ac um crash were they was alameda like obviously victim to that because looking on chain it seems to be that that's where the volume started to drop off the FTT token started to need to really be pegged at 22. It seems like that is the uh, around about the time that you guys really suffered a liquidity crunch through Alameda that, that needed to be plugged. Uh, there were a bunch of different questions there. Uh, yeah, I'll, seriously. I, I'll try and go through some of them. I, I'm not going to remember all of them, but um, I, but, but, but going through some of those. So um uh, 100%. As for why you know Brett and Trevigo left, I, I don't think it had anything to do with this. I think you know, and they can talk for themselves about why they did. But you know, from my you know, uh, from 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 what I knew, I, I think it was entirely. I think it was personal. Um, in terms of uh, talking about, um, uh, in terms of talking about you know timing. I don't have granular detail here. I don't have access to that right now. And I wasn't running Alameda, so I don't know exactly what happened. I don't believe that there was a large loss coming from Luna itself. Um, but I do think Alameda was probably uh, quite long the market in general, that it had a net long position, and that the general market collapse that happened then uh, did decrease its asset values uh, a, a non-trivial amount. Um, yeah. I, I think there are a lot of other questions asked, but I'll let it's okay. There. So I'll, I'll give the mic back. So just I'll give it back to Chet. Chet, I'll let you continue with the line of questioning, please. All right. Um, now you've claimed that Alameda's trading ties with FTX had lessened significantly over the years, correct? Yeah. Uh, yet data from Arkham Intelligence and reviews of public blockchain records show that over 50% of Alameda's deposits and withdrawal volume since early 2018 had gone through FTX. From all data analyzed prior to August 31st of this year, their data also showed, quote, 22 percent of on-chain deposits and withdrawals to FTX digital wallets interact with wallets belonging to Alameda, close quote. And Anchain.ai was also able to reveal that from June 1st until July 22nd, Alameda's known wallets were the largest stablecoin depositors and sources of, of liquidity to all of FTX's known wallet addresses. And your firms were made aware of this data, correct? So I uh, just to kind of jump ahead of some of this, I think those are all very I'd, similar statements. Uh, I prefer that you just answer the question. Were your firms made aware of what I just asked you? I'm not sure. I was vaguely aware of some things related to that. Bloomberg, I, Bloomberg reached out to Alameda <laughs> on September 14th about this, did they not? I wouldn't know. I'm not Alameda. Uh, you, you own Alameda. Uh, you wouldn't have been consulted on any press. You weren't consulted on anything that had to do with press in Alameda, ever. Uh, Is that not your plan? I, I don't know. You laughing? Ever. I can't remember um, having been consulted on you know many things related to Alameda Press. I don't remember this um, particularly coming up, and I uh, I think I may have been. Well, but you just said a few uh, seconds ago that you remember something kind of like this. Sorry, I remember chatter about some things like this in the crypto That's ecosystem. interesting because you just contradicted yourself. So this means that you would have been aware of an issue already ongoing at a minimum as of far back as September. If we're, if we're to believe that you didn't know anything prior, right? So, so why would this not cause you to look deeper into something that would appear to show years after you claim the separation had waned that Alameda still had too much power on FTX trades? So can I answer the question? Now? Yeah, go ahead. That's Chet. Please, allow, please, please allow, yes. allow Sam to answer, please. Ooh, go ahead, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Chet on his yeah. ass. So, uh, I'm not surprised by the fact that Alameda is a large fraction of stablecoin deposits and withdrawals on FTX. That doesn't surprise me at all because 
Alameda was, first of all, a large fraction in general of stablecoin uh, deposits and withdrawals and activity in the crypto ecosystem. But, but second of all, uh, specifically did do a lot of cross-chain conversions of stablecoins um, with and through FTX. So in terms of raw notional of blockchain and particularly of stablecoin deposits and withdrawals, especially just in a sort of like zero sum way where there would be some deposited, some withdrawn, that doesn't surprise me uh, that Alameda had a significant footprint there. However, and, and, and in retrospect, I certainly wish that I had done a much deeper dive into Alameda's positions and balances um, and the history of that on FTX. And that was absolutely a huge oversight. The Why didn't you in the words chatter about this though? So the, well, so the comments that I had been making were around its <laughs> trading activity. And Alameda's trading volume on FTX had dropped from something like 45% of volume in 2019 to something like 2% of volume um, in And is that public record? Is, is there anywhere to verify that claim? I, I've said it many times. I don't know how one would verify it publicly. Um, okay, so it's just your you work. Can, okay, you go on, continue. You could ask the relevant teams. You could ask the Chapter 11 team for that data. Um, you could, I, you know, you could ask anyone who has looked at that data. You could ask I've just, many uh, different I've just I, 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 you I could look at the it. files that we I, submitted I, time and time again. To various, yeah. okay. Chat, I've just DM'd you as well the, uh, the data now, so you can check your DM. So go ahead, Sam. Yeah, so... Uh, so from a trading and volume perspective, it was the case that Alameda had become a uh, fairly small fraction of FTX's overall activity. Um, now, obviously, that was not true, as it turns out, when you looked at Alameda's uh, positions on the exchange. And again, like, I've made a lot of mistakes here. And, uh, and that was certainly one of them, was not paying more attention to, 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 to balances and positions. I was looking at volume because that's what drove revenue. And that's what to me seemed to be driving like business growth. And so I was looking at, you know, volume broken down by, um, uh, I mean, by account, but also by, you know, geography, um, by source type, by product, you know, growth over time relative to other venues. Um, and, um, and there is nothing, uh, that was a real, uh, there's nothing alarming happening in those trends. Um, obviously, in terms of, of positions, there was. In terms of the on-chain deposits and withdrawals, that's actually, I think, a little bit of a different thing, which is neither of those two. And I think is related to the fact that, you know, uh, Alameda used FTX to convert between different stable coins a fair bit. And also, um, I would, uh, you know, there were a lot of, so one thing worth knowing here is a lot of the relevant wallets got misidentified on things like chain analysis between Alameda and FTX. Um, I, and some of these wallets were basically what FTX was using to convert between two different stable coins. So if a user, you know, deposited a lot of BUSD and then wanted to withdraw USDC, there would have to be basically, and, and if you know the reserves were mostly in uh, BUSD at that point, there'd have to be a redemption of the USD and then you know a creation of USDC, which would be sent back. And so that activity represented a fair bit of blockchain-based stablecoin deposits and withdrawals to and from FTX, although it was fairly separate from the rest of what was going on. And what way were you? Sam, Sam. What were you? And what, and what, were, you, and what sorry, way were you protecting? Uh, 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 sorry, Mario, stop that. And what way were you protecting customer assets? <laughs> what? They are getting feisty. Sorry, are you... When you say in what, what way, way was FTX like... protecting customer assets? Which way did you ensure the protection of customer assets? So there were some ways that we did. Obviously, there are ways I like deeply, deeply wish that I had done way better at and deeply regret what happened. The ways That's that I had focused on asked. it the most um, had been looking at a combination of um, uh, basically of like, uh, looking at the cybersecurity side, you know, ensuring that there weren't, you know, hacks on, on the wallets, um, you know, keeping a, uh, you know, counting of the, the assets, making sure that that didn't deviate from what, you know, some balances was, um, getting, you know, gap audits at the end of each year. Um, and, uh, and, 
you know, also just dealing with, frankly, a lot on the fiat deposit withdrawal side where customers would be trying to send money to and from the exchange. And, and you just mentioned account. you just mentioned auditors there. Who 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 audited your finances? Uh, it's uh, sorry, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure if it's public who that is. I, I can say so after presuming that that that, that it is. Um, I, I think um, was, 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 was Prager Mattis was Prager yeah. Mattis a yeah uh, that is correct auditor? okay yeah. and and so where just, the heck so, I'll, I'll give Ryan Ryan do you want to ask a question we'll give it back to Chen uh, yeah. I'll just finish what I'm saying here first and then okay, we'll go, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'd really the interruptions really aren't helping uh, well, 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 where where were they headquartered uh, I was a US based firm okay and um now, the Bohemian Securities Regulator issued a statement on November 17th saying they ordered FTX to move, quote, Bohemian funds on November 12th. Is that correct? Uh, there is a statement that was roughly I don't remember the details of it. OK. And um, were you able to you, you you were the one who functioned this out, um, according to your statements to you know pretty much everyone over the past few days? Uh, you functioned this out. Uh, were you able to do this? as you were still the controlling owner of Alameda and the debtor, or, or what gave you the uh, uh, capability to do this after the Chapter 11 was technically filed? I, I don't believe that I've confirmed that as the one who did it, because I uh, was uh, largely not. Um, but in addition to But that, hold on a second. You, you have stated in your interview with Tiffany Fong just a few days ago that you, in fact, told them of your intentions to do this at least a day prior to them even making a request. Is that correct? Sorry, intentions to do what? To, to move the move Bohemian funds. I don't I believe told, I'm unclear on that at all. That I told who to do that? Because I don't believe The Bohemian regulators. Correct. You don't think that's correct? Okay, would you, uh, Okay. so hold on one second while I play for you uh, your <laughs> own audio. Uh, and for everyone listening, this is from an interview with Tiffany <laughs> Fong um, uh, from just a few days ago. Withdrawals were opened first to citizens of Antigua or Bahamas. Yes, yeah. yes, and then the regulators or securities said that that was not. Yeah. That, 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 wait, sorry. I so I ran. I, I gave them a heads up, a one day heads up that we were going to do it. They didn't. They didn't say yes or no. They didn't mm -hmm. respond, and then we did it. The reason I did it was, uh, I, it was critical to the exchange being able to have a future um, because that's where I am right now and um, you do not want to be in the country with a lot of angry people in it and you do not want your company to be incorporated in a country with a lot of angry people in it and so it was realistically speaking shitty but like yeah the pathway for FTX involved Bahamians not being as good because I guess it could have been looked at as like insider withdrawal sort of thing Oh, it wasn't in start of Charles. No, this was uh, trying to create a regulatory pathway forward for the exchange. Just to like kind of appease the citizens of the country that you're currently in, basically. And that the company was about to be uh, uh, assigned a provisional liquidity. And... Okay, so that seems to directly refute what you just told me, does it not? <laughs> Uh, were, oh, yeah. Hey, sorry. The incident that you were referring to was a different one, I believe, or at least the incident that I like. If, if you repeat uh, where that came from, the um, I uh, the incident that I believe, or sorry, start that question over again. I at least <laughs> that you were about a time when try, I, let's try this uh, again. <laughs> I've stated issued a statement on November seventeenth yeah. saying they ordered FTX to move Bohemian right, funds on November twelfth. November twelfth. So five days prior. And you have then confirmed that to Tiffany Fong, saying that you did move those funds. No, those are referring uh, to, to the Bohemian things. regulators. Those are referring to two so you, different incidents. Okay, so then you... Okay, I'll let, I'll let, sorry, okay. just sorry. Uh, go hold ahead, on a uh, second, Mario. Hold on a I second, want, Yeah, but, uh, now, you, just keep uh, the opportunity to answer, hold, bro. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, but I'm reframing the question, and you're, and you're really not helping right now. Um, so it's the Bohemian fight. funds on they November think we're <laughs> Uh, you're saying are separate. So they like, they like this all the time. Did you move citizens' funds and actually allow citizens to withdraw funds? Hi. In, in which incident? Oh, I just wanted the, the incident in which you're referring to Tiffany Fong. That was a separate thing where we briefly had um, withdrawals open uh, for some Bahamian residents on the exchange. 
Um, that is something that I think was, you know, for a day or so um, before abuse of that forced us to turn it off and is a, a completely, that was prior to chapter 11. Um, that was prior to any filings. That was when I was CEO um, unambiguously of, of, of all of FTX and was unrelated to the other instance that have been referenced in filings and other things. Okay, so we have Tiffany Fong here as oh, well. Is that, was no, that I, your understanding of yes, the conversation? Yes, that was a separate question. Um, it was not regarding the hack. That was about um, the reopening of the handing withdrawals. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, he, that was not in reference to the hack. Guys, do you mind if I go back to just the beginning? Just say on the on the exchange, there were uh, spot positions and there were margin positions. Point the exchange ran completely out of funds. What happened to the that had spot positions on the exchange? Because so they shouldn't have been leveraged, I, right? I so there are a few answers to that. The first is that there were a number of withdrawals. Um, that did happen on the exchange. It is not the case that all of the funds uh, were not available. I think we processed, I want to say something like $6 billion of, um, of withdrawals over you know a few day period. And so uh, part of the answer to that question is um, that they were, uh, you know, a lot of those withdrawals were processed prior to, um, to uh, to reaching the peak of the liquidity crisis and prior to um, you know, withdrawals being effectively halted, um, there are uh, I think a, a bunch of other things going on as well. There, um, some of which I'm still digging into, some of which I'm still piecing together. Um, but uh, but but yeah. But Sam, let me let me, just, yep. let me just let me just let me let me just ask you a, a very simple question. If yep. I'm a user of FTX. I deposited one Bitcoin into FTX on spot. I'm not a leverage trader. I just day to day use right. the leverage exchange. I'm just trying to understand where my Bitcoin is today. Um, um, it, just a little bit of clarity of that. Was was that Bitcoin notional Bitcoin on the exchange, but the money sitting on Alameda? Was my Bitcoin used as somebody else's collateral without my my permission? I'm just. I think let's separate the discussion between. Spot, uh, spot and futures. On, on futures, I understand that there could have been potentially maybe a margin mismatch. And I hear you, and I'm going to give you the benefit of a doubt because I think you're. I think you know we had some good interactions, and I don't believe that you're an evil evil person. But I'm just like just wondering about the spot exchange, um, and that's people that you know didn't give anybody permission to use their money, but that money is no longer there anymore, right? So I'm just wondering like what that money could be. Right. So um, one piece of this is that um, in the uh, in those few days uh, following the collapse, we processed about six billion dollars of uh, of withdrawals. And uh, those withdrawals in general were from a variety of sources, um, including some of those coming from uh, uh, from you know, futures position from margin positions that were open. Um, and that I think Chet might be a lawyer, perhaps like some uh, legal background. There was not a clear um, uh, that 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 Facts. effectively, I think, um, broke down some of that distinction between the two sources. Again, I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to piece together all of what happened, and I don't have access um, to, uh, you know to put all of it together Bye. right now. Um, but my best guess is that that was at least uh, a significant part of it. So the, the so whole wallet between I, futures and spot were co-mingled. Why are we just so allowing yeah. it? Yeah, so, so it's, it sounds the to me like... The whole wallet between the, futures and spot, but those were co-mingled, right? Uh, that's right. Yeah, in general, balances were treated as... I don't even know how to turn, turn this down. Can I turn it down? Okay, well, no, wait, I'm trying to just... Malik, we just, we just watching this uh, Twitter so space, man. You're missing. Then. Just about to go get his on, daughter. I want to deposit money into FTX. I deposit money into Silvergate Bank, which is United States Bank. I put the money into the into the bank. That money lands up in Alameda's bank account, right? So now the, now you've got... Let's say I take $100. I deposit $100 into FTX. But what I actually do is I'm depositing into Silvergate's account on Alameda, and the account name is Alameda. So now okay. Alameda has $100 of my money. And then I want to buy a Bitcoin for a, let's say I put $20,000 in and I want to buy a full Bitcoin. The money is 
tell me where the money is sitting now, though, because this, this is the part that I'm confused about. Yeah, uh, I'm not surprised you're confused because it's confusing, and uh, and it confused me, and uh, there were a lot of poor decisions made there um, on on our part. Um, my understanding, and again, I'm I'm not a hundred percent confident in all of this. I am still trying to piece together all of this again without access to data in retrospect. But um, but my my general understanding is that, and, and and here you're referring, I think, to the you know especially the sort of 2019 2020 era um, where there were no FTX bank accounts, but where some customers were wiring straight to Alameda Research. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to I'm trying to work yeah. out if the money ever left Alameda and was stored in a custodian somewhere else which really represented a balance on the exchange or whether there was a money deposit into alameda which we'll talk about in a second and then you just gave me a notional balance on ftx which was just a digital number on a screen and you let me use that money to trade potentially notional bitcoin because actually i didn't have physical balance on the, the exchange because the money was sitting in an alameda account that's the part that i'm that, that i'm trying to understand right because that would make sense as to why yep. Alameda had so much money to invest in projects and FTX didn't have any money to pay out to customers, right? Yeah, so I believe that was part of the story. And and again, I, I'm not 100% confident. I'm I'm working with what I have here, but I believe that, that, is, that what you said is effectively part of what happened. I'll give one caveat to it, which is that I believe there was a ledger transfer Away, you know, it wasn't just a pure crediting of the company. They got thirty-eight thousand people in here. To another, all of Twitter um, is that, that debit <laughs> didn't clearly show up as a debit on Alameda's main account, and so did not clearly, uh, you know, add on the dashboard to the the risk of uh, of Alameda's position, which is one of the things that led to me being surprised uh, by the size of the position. Because that makes sense as to why there were no more Bitcoin to withdraw, where customers like right. like that I know had Bitcoin balances, because those Bitcoin right. actually didn't exist, because it was just notional. You were just letting us buy notional tokens that didn't actually really exist. Uh, yeah, or another way of phrasing that. Because otherwise, you would have had to have the USDC uh, somewhere. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I believe that what you're saying is, in fact, part of what happened. Uh, Chet, do you want to continue with your questions, man? Yeah, so um, uh, just to continue here. So uh, when you're saying, oh, I do want to go back to those funds that you moved uh, to the Bohemian citizens. Um, when you moved them, you were already aware of the issues of liquidity, correct? <laughs> so I, when you say you moved them, this was a question of which withdrawals in which jurisdictions were open when. Um, there were other jurisdictions where withdrawals were open as well. Um, it was not a single... Uh, shut off on all process. Um, but yeah, there were liquidity issues creeping up and uh, and we had a staggered shut off effectively of um, of uh, withdrawals. There was not large size for what it's worth that went out there. Um, uh, all, nearly the entirety of the withdrawals that we processed, I want to say uh, something like 95%, um, I think more than 95% of the withdrawals um, uh, were all done prior to any shutdowns, um, but there was a little bit left that came out from some jurisdictions, the Bahamas being one, Japan being another, uh, given that Japan has segregated assets, um, and uh, uh, and there may have been one or two other jurisdictions as well. Um, why did you allude to saying that you moved those funds to Bahi uh, appease Bohemian authorities by ensuring that Bohemian citizens wouldn't be angry at you for losing their funds uh, specifically in in this context? So I, I wouldn't say I moved them. I mean, it's a question of whether to close withdrawals. And, and it was, you know, accounts choosing whether or not to initiate withdrawals. I wasn't initiating them. But um, but yeah, that was one of the jurisdictions that we were last to turn off withdrawals. And uh, that is correct. And um, I, you know, I, it felt uh, appropriate given that that was where our primary regulator was. That's where our, our headquarter was. And, okay. um, but you know, after, okay. after about a day of that, we started to see some signs of people trying to abuse it and we shut okay. it down. Sam, okay. just, just and, a question. Um, 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 you, you guys, we... uh, 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 I dropped you... out. Go ahead, chat. Sam, you claim that FTX US and FTX Japan are entirely solvent and yep. also entirely separate from the rest of your companies, correct? Yep. 
Um, I think everyone would be interested to hear why, you know, you filed for bankruptcy for both of those, not just FTX US, but FTX in Japan. Uh, why, why, why did you make that decision, regardless of the time that you made it? If you knew these were entirely solvent, why wouldn't you have argued to keep them out of the, the Chapter 11? I argued for quite a while to keep them out. Um, in the end, I was informed uh, in a way which I, I no longer believe was true, that this filing would not mean that withdrawals would be shut off there, that this is not, it did not mean a bankruptcy filing, that it was just a provisional step, um, but that appropriately, appropriate and responsible steps would be taken in those jurisdictions. I am surprised at what happened after my filing. I don't know why that's what happened. Um, and I, I, and I regret it. Okay. And, 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 and just to go a little bit further there. So you, you, you specifically though, didn't file FTX digital markets, right? FTX pray, express pray, and, and, and at least two other entities in the chapter 11. Right. If you were able to choose not to file those, um, oh. how come you couldn't for the U S and Japan corporations? I wish I hadn't. I wish that I had done what you're saying. I'm not asking, asking what that, you wish you could have right. done. I'm asking so, why you didn't. The reason that I didn't file those in particular was those were entities where local regulators prior to my filing had already stepped in and initiated their own processes. And so I couldn't have, even if I had wanted to, uh, for those entities. And that includes FTX Australia? Yes. Um, you said also said that eight minutes after you filed the initial motion for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, four billion dollars more uh, of liquidity basically was called in. Someone said that they could give you that cash injection. Is that correct? Uh, I, I, I don't dispute that I said something like that. Um, but did you actually get the liquidity of four billion offered to you eight minutes after you filed the Chapter 11? So that would have been 438 in the morning. Did you get that? Um actually offered to you yes uh by whom can you state i cannot okay um why uh haven't you filed a motion to voluntarily dismiss the bankruptcy cases under uh, under u.s bankruptcy code section 1112 um, if you believed that you could save the company through that cash injection and you also thought that ftx us and ftx japan were fully solvent i acknowledge your question um I you know, want to make sure that I operate in a you know, responsible and compliant uh, manner here. I you know, would be discussing what would or would not be appropriate with counsel. And at the end of the day, I think that the right parties to be filing uh, here would not be, uh, you know, I, I think that the right parties would be, you know, regulators, administrators who are overseeing this internationally who have been, um, uh, you know, leading the charge. Um, but I, I acknowledge your question there. Um, okay, so so you're saying essentially um, no, that's a non-answer, right? Like because you didn't you didn't say why you haven't filed that motion. You just said you would talk with counselors about that. Um, what counselors? Uh, you know, like like what what who 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 are you paying? Like like what does it cost you right now uh, for counsel? And and how are you affording that? Given you said that you were essentially cash poor, although you said you also had potentially up to a hundred thousand dollars left. That's uh, something I'm trying to figure out right now. You, uh, so you have them on retainer without actual payment? Uh, I can't go into the details. There are also potentially various uh, relevant DNO policies which are being examined as well. Um, but uh, uh, but I, you know, frankly, that's that that is a concern for me. Okay. And um, what funds were lost in the hack, and and from what entities that you're aware of? I don't know the details of that. That happened after, um, you know, the uh, Chapter 11 team. Um, okay. But, uh, you know, I, I think, on, I, to my knowledge, this sort of on-chain analytics, as long as you don't count the, as long as you make sure to distinguish between the various custodial processes that were taken then, um, to my knowledge, have done a decent job of tracking uh, what that was, but I don't know a ton more than that. Okay. Um, but you said that FTX US lost $250 million in the hack. That was a statement from you. Uh, when, uh, when did I say that? Uh, you said that in the, in, in the past few days, literally. So, uh, so if you said that FTX lost oh. $250 million, it was the hack. Where, where, where are you getting that information from? So I would be surprised if I'd said that it had done that. I think I wouldn't be surprised if I'd speculated that maybe the notion of it was something kind of similar to that based on what had happened on chain, but I don't think I know exactly 
how much it was or from exactly what entity. Okay, but if you're assuming that much, and Arkham Intelligence also reported that around $204 million of funds were moved off of that U.S. exchange to Alameda just a few days prior to the bankruptcy. Does that mean there's a plausibility of a half a billion dollar hole at FTX or at U.S.? Or does that mean uh, there's just a plausibility of a quarter million dollar hole? So uh, I will make a few notes. This is all as of when I had last looked into it. And my data is somewhat stale here. So I'm, I'm just, you know, guessing as best I can. First of all, the funds moved off. There are also funds moved on. There were a lot of deposits and withdrawals on FTX U.S. for many customers. All right, guys. <laughs> this is... Uh... <clears throat> going to be a very long twitter space so i'm not going to sit here for this whole thing not for a youtube channel but i'll definitely be listening in i advise you guys to pay attention to pay to pay attention to it as well but i gotta get out of here family's coming home here in a little bit gotta go get some haircuts and whatnot try to get cleaned up for uh my daughter's birthday this weekend so i hope you guys had a great day <clears throat> i look forward to seeing you all in the shop tomorrow and if not have a happy friday and enjoy your weekend man I'm going to get out of here. Justin had to head out. He had to go get his daughter. So, um, yeah, man, I hope you guys have a good one. So my name is T. Hobbs. This is the Crypto Shop, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.